Welcome back design students. In this video we're going to program this game asset so that the lid opens when the player walks up to it. So the first thing we need for this is an animation and the animation in Unreal is called a level sequence. So come up to cinematics and click add level sequence. And let's name this open top or something like that and then this window will pop up. Now you can dock this window down here if you'd like. So we need an animation track and we can add that right here with this big green button here and we're going to animate an actor and everything in Unreal is an actor. The actor we're going to animate is Crate Top and when we select that we get a track. Now what we're going to animate are its transforms so let's open that up and find a rotation. Now instead of X, Y, and Z they call it roll, pitch, and yaw. These are aircraft terms, but pitch is the one that we want. So let's set a keyframe by clicking this little button here next to pitch, and then move forward a few frames, and hover over the number beside pitch, and open the top. And we now have two keyframes. So let's play this by clicking the play button. Now, if it's too slow, grab this keyframe and move it closer to the other one. But I think my speed is just about right. If you want to slow it down, move them further apart. So right now, this animation is 150 frames long. We don't need it to be that long. So let's grab this and move it to the end of our animation. Our animation only needs to be as long as these two keyframes. And now we need to do one more thing. Right click in this window here, in this timeline, find properties and find when finished, click that pull down menu and select keep state. Otherwise, every time we open the crate, it will shut because it'll reset. And we don't want it to do that. And then click the little disk icon here to save what we've done. And we now have a fully functioning level sequence right here. But we also need to start it closed to so make sure that hat. Make sure you put it closed and then click save. So the next thing we need to make this work is something called a trigger volume. Trigger volumes can be found over here in the place actors uh, tab. Come over here and in the search bar type in trigger and you will see trigger volume. And then you just simply need to drag a trigger volume out, and it looks like an empty sort of box. And then we need to put it down on the ground and position it so that the player can walk into it. It doesn't need to be that big, so to resize it, come over here to the details panel and find the brush shape. And in the Y, Let's make it narrower, and then let's also make it much shorter, and we can probably make it shorter this way too, because really all we want is for the player to, for the thing to open when the player walks up to it. We could make it as wide as the box, but I'm, I'm thinking that... Um, this would be sort of where he would be if it had a latch or something, so that's why I put it there. So now we need to program. So what we're going to do is add to the level blueprint, the main blueprint that runs the level. Make sure you have the trigger volume selected. You can select it over here in the outliner if you need to. And come up to blueprints and open the level blueprint. And then right click in the blueprint area and notice we have things associated with our trigger volume that we have selected here. That's why we selected it. We want to add an event and the event we want to add is a collision and we want to add an actor begin overlap. So click that and then right click and do it again and we're going to add an actor end overlap. So we want the chest to open when the player walks up to it and close when he walks away. The next thing we need is a reference to our level sequence that we created. So look in the world outliner right here, drag the blueprint window over a little bit, and look in the world outliner and find your 
open top level sequence. Click and drag it into the slate. You have to do that from the outliner. You can't do it from the content browser. And once we have that in place, and we're going to share this between these two events, we want to drag off of this output node and type in get sequence. And what we want is the sequence player. And that comes in with two nodes. This one we don't need. So click away to deselect and then select that one and delete it. Now that we have this in place, we're going to drag off this output node here and type in play. Now the play that we want is very specifically this one. Not this one, just play. Now that we have that, we're going to connect our overlap event to play. So what we're saying here is when the player overlaps the trigger volume, play this animation right here. And now let's animate the closing. Drag off of this node again and type in play. Now what we want this time is reverse. Play reverse. And then simply connect these two. And so what we're saying here is when the player leaves the trigger volume, reverse the animation. Once you've got that done, compile your code, save, and then you can close the level blueprint editor. And now let's click play and see if this works. And there you go. And it'll stay open as long as I stand there. If we hadn't selected keep state, then it would close after a few seconds. That's why we did that. Now when we leave, it closes. Open, close. Open, close. Open, close. Now we can also set all sorts of conditional statements here in the code, and we'll do that later, such as when the player is out of ammo, he can open the ammo crate, but only if he has a key or something, or so many points. So we'll do that in another video, and I'll see you then.